Welcome to 340B Insight from 340B Health. Hello from Washington, D.C., and welcome back to 340B Insight, the podcast about the 340B drug pricing program. I'm Miles Goldman with 340B Health, filling in this week for David Glendinning. Our guest today is Dr. Tiffany Wingfield with the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, or ASHP. We invited Tiffany on the show to discuss pharmacy technician shortages, a topic that has been on the minds of many individuals in 340B hospital pharmacy departments in recent years. As you will hear, pharmacy technicians play key roles in operating hospital 340B programs, so we wanted to better understand the shortage issue and consider what might be done to address it. But before we go to that interview, let's take a minute to cover some of the latest news about 340B. Earlier this month, President Biden signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act. This major legislation includes provisions affecting health care, energy, and climate. On the health care side, it authorizes Medicare to negotiate prices for certain outpatient drugs for the first time. The drug negotiation provisions will affect the size of 340B savings for certain drugs, though the full extent of these effects will be subject to complex and unpredictable factors. 340B Health members can check out the show notes for more details, and we encourage 340B Health members to attend our webinar on October 6 for additional analysis. Last week, the annual 340B hospital recertification process began. Hospitals have from Wednesday, August 24, until midnight Eastern on Monday, September 19, to complete the recertification process with the Health Resources and Services Administration. In our most recent episode, 340B Health Vice President of Pharmacy Services, Stephen Miller, discussed what is new for this year's recertification and how to avoid common errors. So we encourage you to listen to that conversation as you navigate the process. You can find a link in the show notes. And now for our feature interview on pharmacy technician shortages with ASHP Director of Member Relations, Dr. Tiffany Wingfield. I recently spoke with Tiffany to hear ASHP's analysis of the causes of the shortages and potential solutions. Here's that conversation. I'm joined by Tiffany Wingfield from ASHP. Tiffany, thank you for joining us and welcome to 340B Insight. Thank you so much for having me. Many professionals working with the 340B program are pharmacy technicians. Tell us about their day-to-day responsibilities, including how it relates to 340B. Sure. Well, I think the overarching thing that I want to get across, if nothing else, pharmacy technicians are essential members of the healthcare team. They are integral to achieving, you know, optimal patient care outcomes. That's the overarching thing I definitely want to say. You see technicians, uh, specifically those in hospitals, working in a number of roles that could be preparing IVs, ordering medications, providing customer service to patients and other healthcare professionals, uh, purchasing and invoicing, inventory control, things like cart filling. And then we have those technicians who are in advance or management positions. Um, They have extended study and extended training, and you might see them as a range of different positions. They can be, you know, prior authorization coordinators, business analysts. They could be in medication reconciliation and med med history. They could be purchasers, investigational drug services, And then those advanced positions like 340B techs. So 340B techs, you know, they are in that category of advanced technicians. They review and analyze contracts and service agreements. 
You can see them preparing RFPs, requests for proposals. They really help their leadership departments by analyzing costs and meeting with vendors and providing recommendations for drugs to their leadership. Uh, they train staff, especially they have specific software they engage and deal with, such as their split billing software. They have to do that a lot under the federal regulations. Uh, they work with wholesalers and they do monthly reporting on things like drug utilization and the savings that they are achieving from these drugs. It really is so much breadth and depth at the at the same time. It really is. And I think that that's really great context as we dive further into the the challenge of staffing shortages. And we've been hearing a great deal about staffing challenges in hospitals across the country. How has this affected pharmacy techs? Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I'll just mention it. This past November, ASHP, we conducted two surveys, two online surveys, to better understand the actual shortage of technicians in these hospitals and health systems, as well as a, a number a number of other practice settings. And we also wanted to look at what are the current needs and realities of our technicians and the roles that they play. So the first survey we administer, ASHP administer, was an administrative survey. And this went to pharmacy executives and multi-health systems and hospitals and directors of pharmacies at individual hosp hospitals and health systems. And then we had a technician survey that we sent, uh, and that was administered by ASHP and PTCB, Pharmacy Technician Certification Board. And that went to a larger, uh, much larger pool of technicians who range, you know, working in hospitals and health systems, community pharmacy, home infusion, specialty pharmacy, and other pharmacy settings. But to answer your question, what did we find out regarding the challenges? Well, we saw, as we thought, as we're hearing from our members, technicians continue to be affected tremendously by these shortages. When we looked at responses reported from administrators, the vacancy rate of some of their technicians in inpatient positions was 22%. That's sizable. And then the vacancy rate of some of their technicians working in more, you know, direct ambulatory care was 21%. So, you know, 20% period is, that's a huge vacancy rate. So what does that mean for those technicians working in those departments? Three overarching challenges kept reoccurring. They have tremendously heavier workloads. They don't have enough time to do those workloads. And they mention inadequate compensation. These are the three overarching challenges that continue to resound in those surveys. And, you know, honestly, those are perfect equations for burnout and disruption of work-life balance. That's interesting to hear. And certainly it shows it's a more complicated problem than just thinking COVID. It is. I could tell you, you think about the pandemic, other things impacted the shortage it's becoming a little bit harder to just become a technician, which it should be because, you know, pharmacy technicians play a critical role in helping to provide medications to patients. So, you know, you see that as employers are requiring certifications for their technicians, even the job postings that you see, you know, they're requiring their can candidates to be certified or enrolled in a pharmacy technician training program. And many states are requiring them to be certified. To me and to ASHP, these are all very good things, but these also may be, you know, influencing some of the shortages that you're seeing because people are saying, oh, okay, this is a career. This isn't just a job. And you shouldn't be able to walk into a hospital and just start filling medications for patients. There should be training, you know, required for that position. Now, kind of thinking about this from the flip side a little bit, there's a shortage. Right. So, of course, hospitals will want to retain staff and recruit staff, are they having trouble with retention and recruiting? Yes, resoundingly. Yes, very much so. So, you know, our administrative survey, the majority of our administrators reported turnover rates from anywhere between 21 to 30 percent last year in 2021. So that when we dug a little deeper, one in 10 said they had lost 41 percent or more of their technician staff. That's that's a lot. It's a whole lot. And, you know, from the first question you asked me about what do technicians do, we see they have a considerable role in helping the pharmacy run. So if 40 percent of your technicians are gone, that definitely, you know, creates a problem for retaining the people you have. And, you know, our administrators and directors 
what are they doing to address that? Well, what we see is a lot of them had to increase overtime to fill in shifts. Nine out of 10 of them said that, you know, their pharmacists now are having to fill in those technician positions. So they're having to do the work of those technicians because they just don't have the technician staff. And then we saw over 40% of the administrators reported that they just went to outsourcing for their medication preparation and products because they just didn't have that technician staff. How do pharmacy technicians feel about the actual responsibilities? You went through a number of them earlier. How do they feel about those? How do they feel about the mission overall? You know, when we, again, referring back to our data, we took in the technician survey, specifically we asked technicians things about job satisfaction, career motivators, reasons they stay or leave. And good news, over half of them, 56%, reported a very strong job satisfaction. They were very happy at their jobs. And the top contributor was that they are able to help people, that desire to help patients and people. That was a motivating, overarching theme throughout the entire survey of our technicians. They also mentioned being able to have more flexible work schedules and career ladder development as factors that contributed to their satisfaction. I also think that among these things with satisfaction, whether being happy or unhappy at your job, I think public perceptions and practice misconceptions of pharmacy technicians definitely plays into that factor of job satisfaction. But then from an organizational perspective, we see it impacted in, you know, just the pay scales. Pay scales are often structured on a grade system, so they don't account for that specialized trainings that some of those technicians that I mentioned in those advanced roles do. So if you, you know, if you're a technician and you go above and beyond and you start working in these advanced, you know, you get this advanced certification, but your organization doesn't really perceive it, you know, all techs are viewed the same, then that kind of influences your job satisfaction as well. It makes a lot of sense. And I know, Tiffany, this is something we hear about a lot too at 340B Health is pharmacy technicians wanting to the public and, and wanting just even more people in their hospitals to just understand the value they're providing and more educational opportunities. I want to make sure we kind of zoom out a little bit, go a little bit higher level to talk about what all of this means. This issue of pharmacy technician shortages, what does it mean for hospitals? What does it mean for patient care? I think bottom line, when you, we start seeing these shortages and the numbers that I gave you, these sizable shortages, those are disruptions to a healthcare system. That's the overall what we should be most concerned about. When you start seeing people stretch so thin, it increases in workloads and often makes these workloads unmanageable. That inadequate staffing, and then you couple that with people feeling underpaid or undervalued, that's a recipe for oversights and error. People are tired. There becomes a decrease in attention for detail. Customer service to patients and others on the interdisciplinary team can be compromised. And there also can become operational deficiencies. I think also it impacts patient care because, as I mentioned, we're seeing these pharmacists having to step in into those roles of technicians. So they're not able to practice at the top of their license to provide that clinical care to patients because they're having to do technician roles. If you ask me, but you didn't, but I'll tell you, if you ask me, what do I think is needed? It, it goes back to, I think that additional layer of pharmacy technician leadership is needed. And what I mean by that, that career ladder development, providing those roles for technicians to have those advanced roles like tech, 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 where technicians are overseeing other technicians. This really helps to reevaluate how things, how people are operating within their institutions. I want to dig a little deeper in terms of what this all means for 340B and for services related to 340B. How do these shortages affect pharmacy technicians' ability to operate effective 340B programs? When we looked at our survey data, we did see a lot of our administrators reporting that these shortages have indeed impacted their staffing of technicians in these advanced roles like 340B. So specifically, over half of them, 53% to be precise, of these 
administrators reported that they had to stall the expansion of new pharmacy services because of these shortages. And then almost another 50% of them reported they had to reduce services altogether because of these shortages. So you see how it directly impacts, you know, technicians being pulled. And as I mentioned, you have those technicians who are in those advanced roles like 340B. Well, because there are shortages, they aren't able to practice in those advanced roles. They're being pulled to work in those day-to-day operational technician positions. And are skills managing the 340B program helping pharmacy techs support or move into other pharmacy roles? I definitely think so. I definitely think it provides an advantage. Uh, 340B compliance is a great field for technicians to pursue. It requires a robust understanding of pharmacy workflows and drugs involved. And whether or not you come in with that training or you acquire that training, it gives you a huge comprehensive view of the pharmacy system, right? How things are run. But often what we see is many of those technicians, that's a skill that must be acquired, meaning supervisors need to invest in their staff to kind of train those technicians. That may not be something that they immediately come into in the role having to have those skills. Well, I think that's a great segue to kind of try to put this all together from a retention standpoint. You mentioned staffing models earlier and this this idea of creating a, a new sort of mid-level management level for pharmacy techs. Are there other retention and, and, and recruitment techniques, strategies that hospitals can use to address the shortage? Well, I think the shortage is definitely pulled out the creative side for a lot of hospitals. So some of the things that we saw from our surveys Retention and recruitment efforts, 75% of our administrators reported that they offered base pay increases over the last 11 months. And that's compared to 31% of them offering increases in 2021. So, you know, that was a huge effort that they responded to. And it correlates with what we saw in our survey. A data point that for why technicians are unhappy in their positions was inadequate compensation. Some of the other financial incentives that administrators took over the last 11 months, off-cycle pay increases, shift bonuses, referral bonuses, sign-on bonuses. And then we looked at, okay, well, those are financial incentives. What kind of recruiting strategies are they doing? Some of them mentioned that, you know, they really revamped and enhanced their job ads and recruitment fairs. They took a more interest in recruitment fairs, whether that's having staff to attend these to really pull out more candidates for their hospitals. They increased their recruitment training programs. They modified their job titles. So that goes into thinking above and beyond outside of the box for these technicians. We have a number of pharmacy technicians who listen to this podcast. What advice would you have for them in order to have a satisfying career? I would say for technicians, Satisfaction could be investing in their own career growth. You know, that means participating in professional organizations like ASHP. There's so many opportunities to network and engage with their colleagues and really help them to see above and beyond and imagine, you know, challenge those limitations. Think outside of the box. Commit to learning and with the certifications that are available now for technicians. I think there's so many avenues and venues for technicians to go in that will provide them with rewarding and fulfilling careers. Well, that's a, a great note for us to end on, Tiffany. And you've you've given us a lot to think about. I, I appreciate you joining us today to break down the, the pharmacy tech shortage and provide us with ideas for solutions. It's, it's always great to hear ASHP's perspective on these issues. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed it. Our thanks again to Dr. Tiffany Wingfield for sharing the perspective of ASHP and its Pharmacy Technician Forum on the important issue of workforce shortages. We know many of our listeners are pharmacy techs, so if you have any insights into the challenges discussed on today's episode or other topics that you would like us to cover on a future show, please email us at podcast at 340behealth.org. 340B Health President and CEO Maureen Testoni will be back on our podcast soon to provide her analysis of the top issues in 340B. 
We encourage you to email any topics or questions you would like us to consider discussing with Maureen. We will be back in a few weeks after the Labor Day holiday weekend. We hope you enjoyed the last few weeks of summer. As always, thanks for listening and be well. Thanks for listening to 340B Insight. Subscribe and rate us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information, visit our website at 340bpodcast.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at 340B Health and submit a question or idea to the show by emailing us at podcast at 340bhealth.org.